fairly certain I'm about to commit the ultimate YouTube sin. If I get sent to like YouTube of purgatory or something then so be it. I know I'm already going to hell. I'm filming about four videos today. It's hard enough getting dressed like once. I've no intention of changing my outfit to make it look like I film them on separate days. So I've talked a lot about my feet and that side of my neurological problems. I've kind of touched on the dementia issues but I've not really talked in great detail and that's what I wanted to talk about today because it's been getting worse and I've had a few incidences in the last few weeks where well, it's been embarrassing. I've had like things in public. But obviously my brain works else I wouldn't be sat here talking to you. I'd be like a zombie or something. When you're when you're starving your brain obviously shrinks and it can grow again. But part of the neurological problems that I have, um, part of my brain wasted away and it's not coming back. And it's called cerebellar atrophy. Atrophy is wastage um, and it's the cerebellar, uh, cerebral, cerebellar bit. And it's not dementia as in the dementia that you know. I basically got dementia without having dementia, if that makes sense. So I've got the symptoms without having it because I've got the wastage in that part of the brain where dementia is, but because I haven't had the disease progress how it normally would, if that makes any sense. Dementia is not something that you would normally associate with somebody young, and it's definitely not something that you would associate as a side effect of an eating disorder, or kind of as a result of an eating disorder, um, and that's I kind of, I guess, why I wanted to talk about it today. In this channel, I'm kind of trying to raise awareness of the things that can happen um, that aren't necessarily well known. I've been having symptoms, I just thought it was because of malnourishment, but I had an MRI for my migraines, and they came back with this completely new diagnosis, and I was like, oh. It was around the time that I was um, being diagnosed with my feet, so it kind of fucking hiccups. And the the kind of the two incidences that I wanted to kind of tell you about, and it kind of, I guess it will tell you a bit about how it affects me. What it's like. I mean, for me, I have memory problems. I have I have a really great long term memory, but short term memory. Um, it's not so much like with remembering things, it's more like when I'm on the spot, like when I'm trying to talk, like if somebody asks me a question, if I'm trying to think, if I'm trying to actively think, if somebody asks me a question, if I'm trying to think of a word, I can't think of that word. first incident was when I went to the hairdressers a few weeks ago. And the hairdresser asked me what my niece's name was. Um, I have three nieces. There's Lily, my eldest niece, Chloe, my middle niece, and she, it was my new, my newborn. Well, she's not newborn now. She was born last year. Um, Evie, and I couldn't, for the life of me, remember what her name was. And I was kind of just making small talk for about a minute until I kind of grabbled at Evie. Thankfully, it was the right name. I'm assuming I said Evie. I, I think I said Evie. Um, God, I hope I said Evie. But I was just, I felt awful because I was like, this is my niece and I can't remember her name. It's not my fault. You know, and I've not told anybody that. The other incident, I had my new tattoo done last week and I'm going to show you it. I grabbed my arm really hard then, which would have been really stupid. Um, and my tattooist is great, he's really lovely. 
when I'm trying to talk and it's gotten worse and worse every time, trying to, I'd say sort of every sentence, I forget a word in that sentence. And like I was trying to describe to him the furniture in my room and the word that I was looking for was distressed, like the wood was distressed. And he was like guessing, trying to guess the word and it was like going on for about five minutes and I was just like, you know, he, I think he thought that I was just like, you know, couldn't think of the word. But for me, I was just like, I could see the word in my head. I could see the word there, but I just couldn't reach it. I just couldn't get it. It was there. And it was like hanging there. And I was like, I just couldn't fucking get it. And obviously the more anxious I get, the worse it gets. And if I'm anxious in a situation, then it, it's a lot worse. So like in doctor's appointments, in on the spot things, it's, it's awful. Um, so like if I'm trying to see a doctor to describe symptoms and they're like, describe your pain to me and I'm like, just blank. And that's sometimes why I find it hard, like, like with filming videos, I have to edit the fuck out of them because if I try and just try and talk about something that's really important or emotional, sometimes the words are there, but I just can't get it out or it's just, it's, you know, it's, I just lose, lose, lose what I'm, lose what I'm saying. And also if I get interrupted, it's gone. What I'm saying is gone completely. And it's bloody horrible. <laughs> and I have to, I, I write things down, like I write things down a million times on a million lists on, on my phone, but sometimes it can mean nothing. I'm like, why did I write that down? That doesn't mean anything to me. The other thing is like my concentration. I mean, I used to be able to read, and this is one of the other things that I was talking to uh, my tattoo is about, I used to be able to read a book in a day and I haven't read a book in a long, long time. I started reading books on my phone, like on my iPhone, because the smaller, having a smaller thing to look at, it meant that it was able to focus on a smaller thing, but now I can't even do that. And, Like there's loads, mum's got loads of books that I've not read and I I love, I love reading, you know, I, I used to, when I was younger, I used to go to the library on a Saturday and check out 10 books and the next Saturday I'd go in and take them back and they actually once pulled me aside and said, what are you doing? Are you, we think that you're stealing books or we, are you photocopying them? What are you doing? And I was like, no, I just read really quickly. Um, and they didn't believe me and they tried to ban me from the library, but anyway. <laughs> but I can't, I, I can't read anymore. Films, I, I break them down into like 15 minute chunks. I can't focus and it's, I know, you know, with anorexia when you're malnourished, it's, that's obviously a symptom, but it's something completely different to anything like to anything that I've had and you know I've had I know my body I've had anorexia for 15 years and something can happen and I'm like I don't remember what happened 15 seconds ago I, it's like I can't absorb an hour and a half of a film because that's too much so I need to break it down into smaller chunks you know what what has happened to my brain what has happened it's probably the only thing that I have ever been able to cherish, the only thing that I have ever been able to praise and not doubt, not hate, not criticise. Well obviously I know what happened to it. I've had anorexia for over half my life and part of it is wasted away. It's, it's gone forever. It can't come back. These symptoms won't go away, no matter what I do. It's not just malnourishment, this is 
this this part of my brain that has gone it doesn't matter what I do that part of my brain has has gone I can stop it getting worse but I guess I just wanted to talk a little bit about something that I've not talked about educate I guess and let you know a little bit about what's going on you go back to my belated update and birthday video at the very end there is a clip of me singing as a five-year-old and I was the lead role in a in the school Christmas play and I was the naughty sunbeam and I was made that role to increase my confidence because I was being bullied and because I was really unhappy and I remember sitting in the dining room and learning my lines, the whole script, I was in the whole show, you know, it was probably about an hour long or something and I remember, you know, it's a big role for like a very young child and, and I sang, you know, the solo um, how does a sun, how does a sunbeam learn to cry? So I was the naughty sunbeam. If you like this video then please give it a thumbs up, subscribe and yeah, let me know what you think. Thank you. Bye.